guys. Can you hear me? Okay, so today I'm going to be using um, Inkscape to turn some PNGs into vectors. So I have some images that I prepared. They're still downloading right now. But um, let me pull up my window so that you guys can see everything. Okay. So basically what I'm going to do today is for my last live stream, I just explored Inkscape and see what I could do. Um, I messed around, see if I could like use some fonts, draw some designs. So today what I'm gonna try to do is um, I'm gonna focus more on the design aspect than actually making sure like all the sizing and like properties are correct for um, embroidering and uploading it to the embroidery machine. I haven't looked into all the details for that. So what I'm gonna be doing is messing around with some more designs, seeing if I can turn some PNGs into vectors and then maybe coming up with a little design um, yeah, that's what I'll be doing today. Maybe I can draft something that I actually will use, or maybe we'll just get to making stuff. So let me pull up the image that I have saved. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the file that I already downloaded on my computer. And I'm following a tutorial that I saw online on YouTube. It's called... Um, vectorize a PNG logo with Inkscape by Logos by Nick. So the first thing that I'm going to do is click and drag a PNG file onto my canvas. And let me see if the pop-up window shows for you guys. Oh, it sadly doesn't. Let me see if I can get it to pull up. Hmm. Well, the first thing that happens, I guess I'll narrate it to you guys since I don't know how to show it to you guys, but the first thing that pops up is a PNG bitmap image import. So when I try to drag the image in, it's gonna say um, like how to import it. So I'm gonna click M and then I'm gonna click default and then none. And let's see if it pulls up. Okay, I got my image on here. <laughs> So what I'm going to try to do is I'm trying to remove the background and see if I can make it into a vector. So the reason that you want to make it into a vector is because like if you're trying to use a PNG, they can be very blurry and it, that's because it's in like a raster format. So if I was trying to make my design really big, in this case I'm not going to be because it's just going to be on a shirt, but I think it's good form. If I was going to make my image really big, using a PNG could make it very blurry and it's not very easy to edit when you're designing something so turning it into a vector will make sure that like no matter how big you make the image it'll still be clear like I'll zoom in to show you um, so let's see oops I remember I went into how to zoom last time let's see if I remember Okay, so to zoom in, just remember you press the plus button. <laughs> so see I zoom into this image and it's super like pixelated at the edge and all that. You don't really want that to happen, especially if you're making something big. This also is not editable. Like there are no points on here that I can move around to edit. So that's why I'm gonna be turning it into a vector. If it's a vector, then I could like change these points. I could distort the image or make it smaller or larger. And that's why I'll be doing that. <laughs> so people like to do it so you don't lose quality, basically. Okay, let's see. Let me zoom out. I'm also not paying much attention to the page size. Um, I'm just going to focus on designs today and sizing on a different day because I still don't know like what I'm going to put this on. I might like embroider onto like a bag or a shirt. I'm not sure. So the first thing that we want to do to turn this into a vector is to auto trace the image into a vector. So what you're going to want to do is, let me move this, okay. You're going to want to select the image and then at the top, can you guys see that? Let me make sure. Yeah. At this toolbar on the top, you want to select path. 
And then the third option is to trace the bitmap. So when you do that, like a pop-up window should appear. And see how there are different like options. So um, if your image is black or white, you can probably get away with just using a single scan. And that's because like your image is probably more simplistic and since it's only two colors, you can just use a single scan. If your image was in color, um, you should probably try to use multiple scan and like, let me show you the difference. So on here, there's like more options and I, sh I think you should be able to like, so the number of scans here, that'll tell you like um, how many colors are in your image. I think you should choose the number of colors that are in your image and it'll scan it per color. That is what it means to my understanding. <laughs> um, my image is really simple, but there are two colors. So let me just try the multiple scans. I'll put it for two and we'll see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna leave all the rest of the default images. And when I'm ready, I'm gonna just press update. Okay, so that clearly didn't work because what the update button would do is it'll show you a preview of what your scan would look like. So let's see. How to troubleshoot. Maybe if I put more scans, it'll work. Let's see. Update, no, that didn't work. Let's try single scan because this is a it's pretty simple image. I'm going to leave all of the default options. Oh, and it didn't work. Let's see. Let's make sure I selected this image. Okay, single scan. Hmm, there are more options here of how to scan it, so let me try those. We had it on brightness cutoff. Let's try using edge detection. Okay, so you can see this gave it like a faint outline, but that's not exactly what I want. First of all, they're not solid lines, and um, it doesn't have the circle in the middle that I wanted. So let's see. Oh yeah, my mod put a link to download the software. Inkscape is a free software, so if you want to mess around or follow along, you can do that. And yes, this is the live preview that my mod's talking about, about like, before you actually go ahead and press okay, probably check the preview. Edge detection didn't work, so we're gonna keep going down these options and just seeing what works. I'm gonna do color quantization next. Let's update it. It's more what I want, but it's still fuzzy around the edges. So let's see, auto trace. Okay, auto trace gave me exactly what I wanted. So oh, let me just do the last one just to show you. <laughs> it looks like both of them work. So I'm just gonna use the regular auto trace and I left all the default options on. And this is um, the live preview it gave me. So I'm satisfied with that. So I'm gonna press okay. Okay, and what it should have done, let's see if it actually did that. <laughs> It should gen it should have generated the vector right on top of the image that I had. So let's move this. Oh, it looks like it only it only turned the circle in the middle into a vector. So let's redo this. I want to delete that. So I'm gonna press backspace. I'm gonna select this image again, just by clicking on it. Or you can use the tool up here, the select and transform. It's just the S. So I'm gonna select this again. Let's keep troubleshooting. It didn't work on auto trace. Let me try center line tracing. Okay, and let's press update. It looks right on here. Let's press okay. Oops, did I not select it? Let me select it. And then let me press update. Okay. Hmm, didn't work. Let me close out the window and try opening it again. Again, this is in path, trace bitmap, and then it should come here. So let's see center line auto tracing. Let me try inverting the image. That might work. Should I press update? Hmm. Okay. Sometimes these things take a couple of tries. I'm pretty new to this software as well. So let's see. Trace bitmap. Maybe I should put it on multiple scans. If the single scan's not working, I'm just gonna try this option. Colors. Okay. This should give me a vector. Let me just check. So basically what I pressed was I ended up going to multiple scans and instead of putting on brightness steps, I put it on colors. And then I pressed update and then I pressed okay. And it gave me this vector. So the way to check if it's a vector is to zoom in again. So let's press plus. And do you see the, here, let me close this. Do you guys see the difference in the quality? So this is why you would wanna um, 
make it a vector instead of a PNG. So this is the PNG. This is the duplicated vector that we made. It just looks sharper, and we can prove that by zooming in. So let me zoom in. So I'm going to show you the PNG. So I zoomed in with the plus button again. And look how like pixelated and blurry it is. So I'm going to zoom out with minus. And this is the vector that we made. So I'm zooming in, and you see it's like not getting pixelated. It's just the line is staying like pretty neat. That's because like I don't know if I would say the vector is more HD, but the whole point of vectorizing an image is so that you can make it as large as possible or as large as you want without destroying the quality of the image. So that's why we turn it into a vector. OK. And let me look at what I wanted to do next. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to make the background transparent. What I had assumed was that um, it would make my image transparent, but I think, I, I think because this image has a gray background, I have to turn it transparent myself. If you use an image with a white background, I think it should automatically turn it transparent. But let's see. Okay, so how am I going to fix that? Let's see. I've never turned, I don't think I turned the background on an it, like on a vector transparent before, so we're gonna learn together, class. Let's see what we can do. Maybe, let's look at the options on the sidebar. This would be erasing paths. Oh yeah, also I wanted to show you guys, another reason why we turned it into a vector is because, so click on the image that you would want to see and um, I mean click on your vector <laughs> go to the left hand side and choose the second um, tool from the top and it's edit pads by node so let me show you what you can do with that let me zoom in and basically it traced this image so that now we can edit this image ourselves by changing the node so say I wanted to um, I don't like how round this is so I want to change it I can just oops what I can do is I can change the image myself like that and then since I don't actually want that I'm gonna press Control Z and I'll go back let me zoom out with the minus we can edit these nodes here so press Control Z and we want to figure out how to make this transparent so let's see do 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 Oh man, I wish I, I used an image with a white background because <laughs> then it would have auto automatically made it transparent. So let's see. Ooh, deleting the nodes from the outside. That is a good idea from my mod. So let's try that. So if I want to do that, I'm pretty sure the way that I'm supposed to do it is click on the image. You want to select it. Um, and up here, second, um, option from the top left hand side is to delete the selected nodes. So I'm going to click on this one in the corners and I'm going to just delete them. I think this might work guys. Okay. So let's just go around and delete all of them. Okay. This is not as difficult as I thought. I thought we were in for a long time turning something transparent. Okay. So perfect. Okay. <laughs> So let me select this again so I don't mess up anything. Oops. Oh, look. It looks like I duplicated it twice. I'm just going to press Control Z. OK. So basically what we did to turn the vector transparent was we deleted the outside, so all of the gray is gone now. So let me select this again. Let me zoom out. I'm just going to move my picture over here delete this. I think I duplicated it multiple times. So here I have my vector. So now because it's a vector, I can change the image and I can change the color. So let me zoom out and see if I can mess around with the nodes. Okay. So I selected it and then I pressed um, edit paths by nodes. So I'm going to click these now. And before, if you noticed when we were dragging out the um, nodes, they were, they weren't the same color as the flower. They were white. So let's see if that's still the case. 
Okay, so you see now, like, when I'm editing the nodes, it's actually editing how the flower looks, so there are so many nodes, it's not really um, making, like, I'm not moving the whole petal at once, it's just moving the selected nodes. So I actually don't want it to look like this, so I'm going to press Control z to undo what I just did, and I'm going to leave it alone. Okay. Let me zoom out with the minus. And let's see if we can change the colors. I think we can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, and I'm going to use this right here, this tool on the left-hand side called Fill Bounded Areas. It's the bucket. So I'm going to click that, and I'm going to pick a color. Okay. Oh, I like this red. Okay. So see that? Since I selected the pink, it filled all of the pink in as red. So let's see. We can change it to any colors here. Also, if you do want to pick your own colors, like, okay, so if you scroll across the bottom, I mean this one, this bar right here, it gives you um, a lot of color options, but if you wanted to make your own color or like use a hex code that you already had, um, how you would do that is you would press con um, shift control F. So let me do that. Shift control F. And what it does is it pulls up the fill and stroke option on the right hand side. So you guys see this over here. So here you can like mess around with the colors and make your own custom colors in a bunch of different ways. So there's RGB, um, there's a bunch of different options. I usually use RGB or I use the wheel because um, you can just move this pointer around, make it more transparent if you want, make it lighter or darker, whatever you want to do. But um, if you wanted to use a hex code, what you would do is um, here, right here, you can put the, um, do you guys see my mouse? <laughs> um, right here, you can input your own hex code. So say I already have a color prepared or I want to use a certain color. I can just type it in here and then I could just add FF at the end and that would be like a hex code. I don't have any particular colors today. So I might go back and change that, change my design later if I want to, but today I'm just gonna pick a color. Um, sometimes I like selecting colors from images or um, like images online or using Pinterest to find colors. You can find hex codes there. There's a website called Coolers, like colors, but with two O's and you can find a bunch of hex codes there. So if you're like looking for something, that's a good place. You can usually, usually what people do is they find like palettes um, and you can find your own color palettes, like colors that match together. I like this color, honestly. Maybe I'll make it a little bit lighter. This blue is kind of nice. Okay, I'm gonna exit. <laughs> and I wanna change this orange into yellow, so. Oh, what's the difference between fill and stroke? Um, I think fill is like, actually, let me open that again. <laughs> Shift, Control, F, and it'll open the fill and stroke. So there's the fill option right here, and there's also the stroke. So let's see. What happens if I select this and then I press the different options? Oh, okay. So this would change the stroke, so like the outline basically. So right here, there are like a bunch of different options. There's flat color, I can do a gradient, which like it could be cool for drawings. In this case, it kind of just makes it kind of like one side darker and one side lighter. So I don't know about that. If you had a thicker stroke, I feel like it would look better. Um, there's radial gradient, let's see, mesh gradient, and a pattern. Oh, okay, pattern's kind of cool. <laughs> dotted line. I guess if you wanted to just show dotted lines, like when people use the scissors, that could be cool. And then swatch. Swatch looks like it gives me a solid outline. If I wanted an outline, maybe, but today I don't. So I'm going to press X, and that'll get rid of my strokes. And then for fills, there's also the same option, so I can even gradient my um, image. I'm, like, I'm doing this design... Um, in case I embroider something using the embroider machine. So personally, I don't think I would gr use a gradient if I was going to embroider something because I think um, that might be a bit confusing. <laughs> so I would keep it solid, but just to go through the options, there's a linear gradient, there's a um, radial gradient, so the outside's gray and then it gets purple in the middle. There's a mesh tool, so this kind of like meshes it with the background. This looks really nice though, if I was making a design. And there's pattern. Oh, okay, there's even options here. There's different, there's so many different types of stripes. <laughs> let me try checkerboard. Okay, and then let me try polka dots. Oh, this is kind of cool, guys. 
there's so many options. There's wavy. Oh, this kind of reminds me of like if you're monogramming something, maybe you could do this for the background. And there's even camouflage. Oh, wow. How nice. And then this right here is swatch. Let's see. Let me add another color. I think swatch is just solid. I'm assuming that. I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna stick by my statement for now unless someone wants to correct me. <laughs> I'm gonna press no paint. Oh, that means it goes back to gray. I mean, I'm gonna press um, flat color. <laughs> and I have this nice blue. You can lower um, the opacity here. So, let me see. I can just drag this up and down. Again, I'm not gonna lower the opacity because I'm embroidering something. So, um, like, embroidery has to be solid. So, I'm gonna leave it solid. <laughs> you can even blur things if you want, but. For this instance, I don't think it would be a good idea. So let me exit that again. Um, does color matter on Inkscape if you want to embroider the pattern? That's something that I haven't looked into yet. I was wondering the same. Because I was thinking, like, just because my design is blue doesn't mean the embroidery machine would automatically know to use bl blue thread. I'm assuming that you would load the thread in yourself. But I'm not sure. That's something I'd have to explore later in this series when I look it up. <laughs> I haven't ever used the embroidery machine before, but this is more in preparation. So I have this flower. I want to see if I can just change the color of the circle. Let me see. I'm going to edit nodes. OK. Oh, OK. This vector is so self-intuitive. So I selected the circle. And let me see. I want to make it a cool yellow. That one's too bright for me. I like this, uh, this golden color. OK. This is kind of cool. I don't know. For some reason, it's giving me like very much omelet vibes. Maybe it's just the color of the yellow. Should I go more lighter? Hmm. I think it's just this color of yellow. Oh, I'm gonna keep it. I think it looks cool. <laughs> oh, my mom said she thinks there might be a gray layer still underneath the flower. I think what late before when I pulled it out, that was actually the case. Let me try selecting it. Cause I think the same. I think there's a gray layer under this and I think that's why when I was pressing like, um, the different options of like blend, there it was gray. So let me see. Let me press ungroup. Does that do anything? No. Oh, okay, look. Okay. So there was a gray layer underneath. I personally don't know why, but this is pretty cool. So okay. So it gave me. I think the vector gave me the solid flower. So if I want that, that's there. And it also just gave me the flower plane. So if I wanted to have um. A transparent circle so say I'm embroidering this onto a shirt and I wanted the middle to just be the color of the shirt and I didn't want um, the embroidery machine to embroider anything there um, I would leave this and give me the circle separately so let's see so right now this is transparent but if I did want to fill it in like say you actually just wanted this to be white you could press the um, bucket tool to fill bounded areas and let me select white so Oops, let me select white. Oh no, I selected the flower. Let's see. Okay, so I just press Control Z, and then I'm gonna use my paint bucket and fill this in. So we're gonna see if that worked. Let me select this whole thing and let me move it. Oh no. Hmm, it looks like it still separated it. I wonder why you can't just like fill it in. Let me see. Hmm. I thought you could use the bucket fill option to make it white if you wanted because the original is transparent. Let's try that again just to see if it works. If not, then I wouldn't be sure, but let's see. I'm going to put it on top of the gray flower just so we can tell. Um, I have so many circles. Let me delete them. <laughs> if you want to delete something, just press backspace. So you select it and then press backspace and it goes away. So let me put my flower on top of the white one. I mean, on top of the gray one. <laughs> and let's see if we can make this... Um, or no, I think that means, I think what's going to happen is it's going to keep selecting the gray one through my blue one. So I guess we'll just put it here. Let me see if I can select this circle. I think that's an option. Okay. And let me see if I can use this bucket right here. And let me just see what color I can make it. Okay, see I did it. Okay, so basically what I did was um, I selected my vector. And I pressed the bucket tool right here, which is the fill bounded areas. Click it, choose a color that you want the, um, the transparent part of your design to turn. So in this instance, I'm just gonna make it yellow. It's gonna turn my whole vector yellow. But what's gonna happen is I'm gonna press the transparent 
um, part of the vector, it's going to fill it in yellow, and then I can, I'm assuming, yeah, turn a different color, make the rest a different color. The boundary tool, I mean, this tool is kind of like, I don't know how I feel about it, I don't think it's that intuitive, because I just want to turn the circle yellow, <laughs> not the whole design, but let's see. Is it just going to keep turning it, my whole image, the same color? Okay, that kind of worked. You can see there's all these lines, so let's see if we can fix that. Okay. Oops, let me press select. Make sure you switch to select. <laughs> and let me press the plus button to zoom in so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Oh, it looks like it gave it a yellow outline because I kept filling it in. So to get rid of this um, this white outline, because um, say you were designing something, I'm sure you wouldn't actually want the outline there. So what you can do is you can select the circle or like the transparent part of your design that you just turned to color. Um, and let's see if we can make it larger. So make sure we press select, and then we're just gonna, um, oops, why did that work? Press select, and let's see if we can make this bigger. Oh, I feel like it's only letting me erase it. Let me see, let me zoom out. Let me press select. Can we just make it bigger up here? Okay, I'm gonna select it, and I'm gonna see if I can just make it bigger up here. Oh no, this is the coordinates of where the image is, not the size. <laughs> okay, let's see. Object properties? Huh, preserve ratio. I wonder why, it, well let me change the size, let's see. Is this, I think this is the, this is the size. That just changes the height. Hmm. It's in rotate? Click select again. Oh, okay. I selected it again. But now it's giving me the, the actual vectors. Let's see. I'm still troubleshooting. Okay, so I press select again, and now it's no longer in rotate. The arrows are this way, so it actually means it's going to turn bigger. So, oh. Let me try again. Okay. This is very finicky. Wow. Control Z. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just chose it for a different corner. So what you would do to get rid of that white line is, I think you just make it bigger and then you would just send it to the back, I assume? And to send it to the back, there's an option up here that says, what's it called? Lower selection to bottom. Send it to the bottom, get rid of this, and there. There's no more white circle. See? So it would be a different design, I mean it would be the design and then you'd have the yellow background. That was a very long-winded explanation, but I hope it helped. I wonder how far I can control Z, so I just wanted the original flower. So okay, I'm control Zing everything, it turned back into what I want. I'm gonna just put this over here, put this over here, move this back. I'm using my arrow keys to move it because it's being a little finicky with my mouse. Let me select it again, it looks like I didn't move it down. I'm gonna make it oh I'm gonna make it a little bigger because I see like that white line in the back. Let me zoom in. There's kind of a white outline. So same difference. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and then I'm gonna move it in the back. And let's see if I can group these items. I think I may have struggled with that in the past. Oh, look at this vector. Sometimes it's not perfect. If you see there's still these notches. If I zoom in, it's not like it's pixelated because the lines are still smooth. Oops, wait, let me do this slowly. Okay, so if you can see, there's still some bumps, and it's not because it's pixelated, because I'm zooming in super far and you can't see the pimp the, the pixels, um, but sometimes, like, if you auto-trace something, it's not going to be perfect. Since I'm embroidering it, like, this looks fine from here. I don't think I'm going to make it super big or have people zoom in, but if you really wanted, like, um, something perfect in detail, what you can do is you can uh, you can either edit the node paths or you can just um, you can manually trace images. I chose auto trace personally because it's a lot faster and I didn't want you guys to sit here while I traced everything. <laughs> but um, if you want stuff to be perfect, you could you could trace it yourself. You can manually trace it. That is another option. I'm curious. Is this one as bumpy? This one's a lot smoother. 
Oh, no, it's not. It's still bumpy. <laughs> so remember, zooming in is um, plus and zooming out is minus. So I don't mind it, but let's see if we can correct it um, by ed um, editing the nodes, just as an example. So to edit the nodes, um, you can press edit paths by nodes. This is the second option from the top. Sorry if you mess with my mask. I think it's a bit too small for me. <laughs> Do you guys ever have the issue like where your masks shrink in the wash? I don't know if it's because they're cotton or what. Okay, so basically um, what I did was I zoomed into the image with the plus and I selected the um, edit paths by node. It's the second tool from the top. Press this and look, so these little squares are the nodes that you can edit. So let me see if I could just, what happens if I delete one? Let's just see. I'm gonna press delete. I just um, right clicked and press delete. If you don't wanna right click, um, there's also this, this bar at the top. So the minus one over here would be delete sec selected node. Let's see what the other options are. Maybe there's one that will smooth it for me. So let's see. Um, this one's a new node, this one's deleting. This one is joining them, that could be, that could work. This one's breaking the path, I don't think that would make it smoother. You can join the selected ed, um, end notes with a new segment. You could delete the segments between them. Oh, these ones are kind of cool. This one, you'll make the node a corner, you can make the node smooth, so let's try this one after I go through the rest. This one will make them um, symmetrical. <laughs> and this will auto smooth them. This will make the selected segments align and this will make them curves. This one you would, um, you could select the object into a path. And the last one is you could convert the selected object stroke to a path. <laughs> okay. Oh, my mod asked, what are the stems off the main node? So like these, I don't really like to mess with them because I think the, the proper name of them is a Bezier curve, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. But um, these, like, you can just, like, mess with the direction of the path, I guess, or, like, how straight the path is. So if you can tell, like, I'm moving this and it's, um, it's messing with the angle. So say I was to zoom out. So let me mess around with it. It just changes the, um, like, the path from the other node it's connected to. So I'm press control Z because I just want it the same. <laughs> and let me zoom in again with the plus. Okay, let's try the options that were smoothing. Okay, so there's there's two. There's make selected node smooth and there's auto smooth. Honestly, I think just deleting the node would work, but let's try these anyway, just to see. Select this and let's press make it smooth. I think you have to press two because it says selected nodes plural. So let me press this one and shift and press that one. And that selected both of them, I think. Let's see. That didn't work. Let me press auto smooth. Okay, that kind of worked. Let me zoom out and see if it worked the way I wanted it to. This bump is so small in the grand scheme of things, but we're just going through examples. <laughs> so I s let me try selecting it again. So I select one, press shift, and select the squares, not the circles. The circles are the, cur um, the Bezier curves. Um, they're the ones that like change the stems. So I selected both my squares and let's press um, auto smooth. And let's zoom out to see the change that made. Let's press control Z, control Y. The thing is it smoothed, it smoothed out these. So I think that worked. <laughs> Let me go in another bump and let's delete it and see what happens. So plus, I just wanna see what happens if you delete the node. So let me select this one and then I press the minus, which would delete it. See, I think deleting it also just makes it smoother too. Or actually, there's still a notch there. Hmm, let's see. Let's just auto smooth everything and see what happens. I'm not going to do this for all of them, but I feel like auto smooth changes the, the general shape more. Control. Or did it? No? Okay. I would choose auto smooth then. Um, I'm not going to worry about it too much because I don't even know if I'm going to use this as my final design, but um, for future notice, that's how you guys do it. And let me still continue to zoom out. Um, I think I'm going to delete this image. I don't think I need it. So I can just right click and press delete. Oh, would it not work? Let's see. 
Oh, it's because I have it on edit node. Um, remember when you use escape, you have to select everything if you want to select it. Um, right now it was on edit paths by node, so it didn't work. Because there are no nodes in that image because it's a PNG. So I'm going to press select, I'm going to select this, and then press backspace, and that'll delete it. My mod said, in general, less nodes will make the overall path smoother. So keep that in mind. Um, maybe delete one and then auto smooth. Yeah, that's what we tried. Um, they give you like about the same, um, about the same difference. Are these grouped? I think that's what we were going to do. Okay, so I selected both of them. Let's see if I can group them. Yeah, I just right clicked it and the group options right here. So I'm just going to group them. It just still let me change them individually, I think. Yeah, as long as I press um, the edit paths by nodes. Okay, so I think I'm going to um, import some more images. I wanted to work with text during this, um, this live stream. Uh, so basically what my idea is, let me see if my images are downloaded. Give me a second. <laughs> I downloaded a bunch of images, which was honestly a mistake, because <laughs> they turned into like a file, like a, I mean not an M file, a zip file, so now I have to like wait for them to all save at the same time, so I think I might just download one at a time instead of all of them. <laughs> okay, let me open my window and see. Okay, so let me just pull up the inspiration image that I have. Okay, so I got this image off of Pinterest, and let me show you guys how to import a photo again. I'm still a newbie at live streaming. I wish I could show you a second window, but I'm not exactly sure how to do it yet, so bear with me. <laughs> you would open, just pretend with me. <laughs> You'd open your image and then just drag and drop it. So I just have my image open in file, and then I'm going to drag and drop it into um, Inkscape. Oops. Let me go into downloads. Okay. And there there will be a pop-up um like a menu when you try and drag and drop your image and you just want to put your import type on M and then the other options that you want to um pick are default and none. It gives you like image rendering mode. You can make it like smooth or blocky, but I just press none. And press okay. And it'll import your image. So, um just for uh like context <laughs> um this is kind of like a design that i'm trying to imitate i got this off of pinterest credit to the original um, artist um so what i'm going for is um at the library when you use the embroidery machine they recommend that instead of embroidering straight onto your article of clothing there's um, a thick fabric here kind of like a canvas and it's better to embroider on that because the thing is if you're um if the embroidery machine makes a mistake or you end up not liking how your design looks, it's easier to throw away just a piece of fabric that's like freeform and like a canvas piece of fabric than to throw away like a whole article of clothing. So in context of that, um, what I wanted to do was um, use the embroidery machine, get some different fonts and kind of do like a scrapbook um, kind of style sweatshirt. So basically what I would do is I would pick some different fonts put them onto squares or abstract shapes <laughs> and embroider them onto the canvas. And then I can either cut the canvas into squares, like these are like just squares, or I can cut it into different shapes like this, make it look more distressed. Um, I think you can distress them with tweezers. And then, um, and then um, I can sew them onto a sweater. So that's my um, inspiration. Um, I guess I'll describe it like, have you seen like the newspaper effects or like a ransom note or even like a collage type thing? That's what I'm going for. So, um, I have some like letters and cool fonts that I found off of Pinterest. So let me open those as well. Do, do, do. I kind of went for like abstract letters more so. And then we're going to do the same process of turning the PNG into a vector. Okay, so I'm waiting for these to download. Mm. And I also had some like cool shapes ready, so 
Let me download as many of these as possible. And we'll see if um, they can be, I guess, traced as well as the flower. The thing is, um, the flower wasn't black and white and it still worked, so I'm assuming the rest of this will. So let's see. Mm. I have to drag all of these images in from files. So let me open my Inkscape. Let me open my file. And let me see if I can import multiple um, files at the same time. Okay, so basically what happened was I shift, I pressed control shift and I selected all of my files and it's just going to open the pop-up menu like repeatingly and you just keep pressing okay. That's how I like imported them so fast. So here's a bunch of like images that I have. Um, if I were you and I was trying to import a lot of images at once, what I would try to do is I would try to make sure the background, I were not the background, I would try to make sure that the images um, were black or white like black and white or that they had a white background like this one is it's red but it has a white background so i think it'll automatically turn it transparent instead of having to delete all of the nodes like we did before like this one since it has a black background and white text we can invert it i'll show you guys when i do it so these were some letters that i thought were pretty cool oh same flower let me delete it this let me delete it and i have another s so and i have a cool alphabet over here i got these all off of pinterest um, also, like, if you guys ever, like, embroider something, or, like, if you're gonna, like, use an image and sell it, make sure that it's, uh, not copyrighted. I'm not selling this. This is, like, I'm making this design for, like, personal use. So, I think it's okay. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> so, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with this flower, hopefully faster. So, I wanna make this bigger. So, let me see. Oh, shift didn't work. I'm trying to remember, like, how you make an image bigger without making like without like keeping the dimensions the same so let's see that didn't make any sense <laughs> let me say that again <laughs> i basically want to make sure that it doesn't distort the image and make it larger so let's see um if i can just change it here oops 80 and 80 that was a square Usually on like, if you press shift, it would keep it, but it's not. So let me control Z. Hmm. Cause that would be better for, that would be nice like to know how to do that for future notice. So let me try object, press transform. So basically what I did up, uh, how I got to this menu was I pressed object on the top menu and then I went down to um, transform. And the shortcut for that is shift control M. So right here it says scale proportionally. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just like undo the change I made in case it wasn't proportionate. Okay, and I'm press scale proportionately and you can just make it bigger here. I'm just going to make it 150%. Oops. And then press apply. If you just, I hit enter, but if you just hit enter, it's not going to work alone. You have to press apply. So I'm going to press uh, 100 again, or 200. And I'm going to apply it. Okay, so I made the image larger. I could have just zoomed in, but um, I'm just going to do it that way. Oh, my mod said click the lock by the H. Oh, it's right here. I forgot. So if you just click this, so the what pops up, it says when locked, change both width and height by the same proportion. So let me do this because it's a little bit big. Let me hit the lock up here and now you can drag in, drag it um, without messing up the proportions. Okay, that's a lot easier. So these are about the same size. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing that I did with a flower and I'm going to vectorize all of these images. So let me pull up my instructions again. I got a handy dandy Google Doc. <laughs> so, okay. Go to the image, press the image. And how I did it from the beginning was I went to path at the top and then trace bitmap. The shortcut for that is shift alt B. 
and then since my image is um, black and white, I'm gonna try doing the single scan this time. Because I think last time we did multiple scan, I think. Okay, let's press single scan. I'm gonna leave it on all of the defaults. I wanna press auto trace. And I'm gonna leave it on all the defaults. I'm gonna press update. Did it work? Let's see. Oh, also, if you had a black background, which I will have for something else, you can invert the image. So let me just show you if I inverted it. Oh, it didn't work. Hmm. Let's press center line. Invert the image. Update. Hmm. I guess I'll show it to you on the next one. This doesn't look that smooth, so I'm going to just try the other options again, because sometimes auto trace is not the best option. I'm going to try brightness cutoff. Update. Edge detection. Okay. That just gave me an outline. See, okay, see that's a better example of the invert. So if I wanted it a white um, outline on black, I'd press invert. Or I'm not going to do that because it's not what I'm looking for. I think it's best to just like go through all the options and just see what works the best for you. This still doesn't look that smooth, so I'm going to try to go to multiple scans and see what happens. Let me just grades. Hmm. Brightness steps. Smooth corner. I've never messed with these settings before. Pixel art. Oh, okay. Okay. I guess I'm just gonna keep it on center tracing on auto line. <laughs> I'm gonna press okay. And let's see what happens. We press update and then press okay. And then let me just exit this. Let me press my image. Oh, it didn't work, guys. Because the image on top should be the vector that came off, and I just dragged it off, and that happened. So let's try again. I think the reason um, it's kind of like skewing how the image is vectorizing is because of this little number here. So let's see if I can uh, if I can crop it. Or can I use this? This is the Erase Existing Paths tool. That won't work because it's an image, I think. Oh, okay. My mod said it should be more smooth on the actual image. The preview is low quality. <laughs> so I guess we'll see. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to crop this. So I think there should be an option at the top. Let's see. Mm -mm. A crop option. Crop option. Or let me just right click and see. Huh. Okay, guys, we're going to try to find the crop op option together. <laughs> maybe it's in transform? Or maybe it's in clip. Let's see. No, I don't think so. Mask. Pattern. Let me try transform. Is it in here? I don't think so. I'm so used to crop being like the dotted line that's in the shape of a square. That's the thing about using new programs is you have to figure out where things are. Too bad there's not a search bar. Or honestly there might be, but I haven't seen it yet. In doubt, Google. So I'm going to Google how to crop an image on Inkscape. How to crop an image on Inkscape. That may be faster than looking for it. I hope this isn't a process. I hope it's an easy option. Okay, so you can use clipping, masking, or pattern. So let's see if we can clip it. Hmm. Okay, so the way to get to clipping is object clip set. So let's try that. I'm going to select the image I want to crop. Let me select it. Press object, clip right here, and set. Let's see. Does that help? That looks like it's getting me rotated. That skews it. That's not what I want to do, so control Z. Okay, let's try again. Object, clip. Let's try mask. Set. Looks like it's giving me the same option. Hmm. Oh, for some reason, Inkscape doesn't. Does it not have a crop? Oh, it doesn't like to crop. 
This might be hard. Let's see. Actually, why don't I just do this letter the last? Because it looks like everything else I have is white and black, so it might be a little bit faster. Let's do this um, S. I think <laughs> I think out of all of these, it's the most simple image. <laughs> um, just in case you didn't know, this is an S, this is an N, the letter N, and this is an A. <laughs> um, so let's see. I had some more letters over here. So let's go to... Um, also, if you don't want to do the object trace bitmap, you can just right click it and press trace bitmap, and that should work. And let's try to do um, the auto trace on here again. Oh wait, I didn't select my S, I selected the N. You just have to remember to select everything <laughs> in Inkscape. So close this, let me select this, and then, or actually that might have been just because it's my preview. So let me press update. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it was, I had the S selected. Um, make sure you press the update button here because it won't auto update. So I updated that and I'm going to try the center line tracing just because it worked last time and I'm, it's on single scan because it's black and white. Let's see if it works. I'm going to leave all of the stuff on um, default and I'm going to press update and I'm press OK. Let's see, Let's see if that works. Let me close it. Oh no! It's giving me like a super simple version of the image so I'm going to erase it and see if a different option works. What's S I O X? Not sure. <laughs> um, let's see. Trace bitmap again. Let's press multiple scans in case. Oh, there's an option here to remove background. Wow. Okay. Let me press OK and let's see if that worked. Okay, that worked. So what I did was I put on multiple scans. I had it on the brightness step option and I just press OK. That's what I did. So let's see if it vectorized properly. Oh, it looks like it's great. Let me press black. Okay. We're going to zoom in just to check. Yep. This is definitely the PNG and this is definitely the... Um see, it's not like super smooth. For today, this is fine. Let's delete the PNGs and let's do it again with a different letter. Let's choose N. I was trying to spell... Um, a word. I was trying to spell out unstoppable, <laughs> but I didn't find enough letters in time before I came to work. <laughs> That's why I had that alphabet on the left side. <laughs> this is, I, you know, I was going for like newspaper or collage effect, but I feel like these letters are like a bit too abstract for that vibe. But I, th I think it would still look cool. So I'm going to trace bitmap again. I'm going to press single scan and let's press invert image and press update. Invert. Oh, let's see. Did it work? Guys, single scan is failing us today. I'm a multiple scans fan now. We're gonna stick to multiple scans. I put on grays and let's see. Um, update, press OK. It still has the background and I don't want that. So let's try pressing remove background and see what happens. I haven't pressed that yet. I've been leaving it on default. So let's press update, and let's press OK. Oh, I wanted to invert it, because um, I think right now that the white part is transparent. Let me just show you. Let me select it. Yeah, it's transparent, and I want to invert it. I want the actual letter N, I don't want the black. Um, so let me see if I remember the shortcut. Is it Control Shift M? That's transform. <laughs> Control shift T. Nope, that's text. I guess I'm just gonna use trace bitmap. Let's see. It's control it's shift alt B. Okay. Not what I would think, but it's okay. <laughs> Let me press this image again. Let me press brightness test. I don't know why multiple scans doesn't have the invert option, but single scan does. That's different that's very weird. Um let's see. Cause I'm trying to invert this. Okay. It will vectorize both the inside and the out, so you should be able to use that. Let's see. I kind of just like, I just kind of wanted to like automatically do it so that I don't have to like delete all the nodes. That might be asking for too much. Let's try inverting it. Sometimes these things take a lot longer than expected. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm just gonna use this, I guess, because it's not... I was hoping to invert it. I want to show you guys how to invert it. But I pressed invert the image, and it didn't seem to work. Let's try again. Because what I was hoping was that the end would automatically fill into black, and the outside would go into white. So let's see. Maybe it's because... Let me try upping the error threshold to 3. I don't know if that'll do anything. But we can see. Filter iteration. I'm just have 2. And let's press OK. Ah, it's not working. Okay. I'm going to delete the node. So let's see. This will be a good example. I'm going to press the... Um, oh, can you adjust the threshold? Let's see. The error threshold. Let me up it to 5. Or 5. And filters, I just put it on 2 because there's only 2 colors. Let me press update. And press OK. Hmm. This is so funny because like on the flower when I inverted the image it worked then. So I guess like... I feel like I'd probably be wasting more time trying to figure out how to invert it. So what I'm going to do is just delete the nodes. So again, you would edit the paths by nodes on the left hand side, the second tool from the top. And there's only four corners. So honestly, this isn't that deep. It won't take that long. So just select it and press backspace. And make sure you delete all of them. And there, I have the letter N. I'm going to delete my PNG. Oops. Oh, this is actually a... This was another vector. Okay, I deleted it. Let me put my N right here. No! Oops. Sometimes I forget to press the select, and then, like, so many things happen at once. <laughs> Let me make this the same size. So, it's on lock, so the, um... Oh, what happened here? Sometimes it seems like th get, when you vectorize things, it gives you so many layers. So I'm just gonna press delete. I'm gonna keep pressing delete. Oops. Are they grouped? Only oh, yeah, they're grouped. So let me press ungroup. So if I want to delete all of those at once, um, just make a box over it. I'm still on the select tool, and just make a box over it. It'll select everything, and I can delete it. Um, do you guys think these letters go together? Let me know. They're kind of cool, I guess. So, like, for a context of what they would look like on a sweater, let's see if we can put boxes behind them, but let me finish this S2, just to see which one's better. Okay. Um, trace bitmap. And single scan. Update. Okay. And let's see if that worked. This one is so wavy. The lines are so straight on it. Let me try multiple scan. Oh, that seemed to work. I pressed remove background on this one. And it seemed to invert it here. Let's try that again. Update. Okay. Huh. I wonder why I did that. Let's see again. Remove background. Update. Okay. Let me remove the move the scans down to two. I don't know what's doing that, so I'm gonna go back to single scan. Sometimes you just have to try all the options and see what works. I'm gonna delete the PNG, move this, edit the nodes again, and delete the corners. And when you delete the corners, it automatically reverses the um, the colors, because that's not gonna want to leave it white on white. Um, let me select that and let me make it smaller. Which S do you like better, mod? Let's use what you like. I'm partial to the one on the left, but. The right is kind of cool too. I feel like it's very abstract, probably matches this letter over here. We still got the A. Let me do that quickly. Um, update, and then press OK. And let's edit this. I feel like I didn't vectorize it. Okay, this is the vector. 
Okay, so because the numbers are on the top left, I'm gonna go ahead and delete them. So let me press, let me see if I can just select them. No, I don't think you can. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in, five plus. a way to like multi like delete a bunch of nodes at the same time um, this is such a painstaking process see this is why like before you even um put the image in your inkscape just go ahead and crop stuff like that out so I would just, if I had known, I would have just uh, cropped the numbers out. Or on paint even, like, um, you can screenshot these images and just, like, save them as PNGs. So on paint, maybe I just would have gone in with the erase tool over it um, and then saved it. Um, just keep deleting them. I mean, this doesn't take long either. It just depends if you want to go through multiple programs or do it all in one. Um, let's zoom out. Okay. Yeah, I think that worked. Okay, so that got rid of the numbers at the top. You can delete the nodes all at once. Use the drag and select box to um, box the nodes. Oh, should have done that. <laughs> okay. These letters don't really match, even though they're all black and white. So, um, I think if I was to use um, Oh wait, let's see. Unstoppable. Let's try this S. Let me see if I can like crop a bunch of these at once. I hope you guys know how to convert things into vectors. I've done it so many times. I hope it's helpful. <laughs> and let's see. Colors, update, okay. It's honestly a pretty fast process. Oops, I think I deleted, deleted the vector one. Yeah, this is the one with the vectors. I delete this. Sometimes it's hard to tell which one's the PNG and what's the vector, so I, you would just um, zoom in, I guess. Okay. When she said you can delete the nodes at once, let's see if we can figure that out. <laughs> Because I just want to use one of these letters, so... Which letters do I need left? You should be able to ungroup all the vectorized letters. Oh, really? Let's see. Okay. Okay, let's press ungroup. Did it work? Oh, wait. Wait a moment. Let's see if it worked. Oh, that took it off the background. So, let's delete this. I don't want this. So, now they're all in a white background. And then let me select them all at the same time. And then ungroup them. Let's see. Okay, so I use a select box. And then can I just group those? And let me press group. And can I move the A away? Let me press select. Oh, I don't think so. Control Z. Oops. This is why I would like a crop. <laughs> I would like a crop button. <laughs> so, how do I ungroup them? Let's figure that out. This is just try and er try trial and error. <laughs> Set clip. Let's see. Is there a way to like select a bunch of them at once? Let's see. Um, you can select like one letter at once, but then like, what do I do after that? Shift Control G. Let's try that. Control Shift G. Oh wait, after I select it. No, I have to do it like this. Okay, 
and then shift control G. Did that work? Two under? Oh, let me press all of them at once then. Shift control G. Oh, they're sadly still grouped together. I'm gonna give myself two more minutes to finish to figure out how to do it, and if I don't, I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> oh, let's see. I can press ungroup. No, um, let's see if that works. I selected the whole image, or I guess I have to press this, and then. There's so many options up here. Sometimes it's a bit confusing because there are so many. But we can do it again. Hmm. And I press, can I cut it? Oh no. I think I deleted the image. The whole image. Control Z. Create a clip group. I'm trying to figure out what the clip is because I would assume it's crop, but it doesn't seem to work the same. Oh, maybe try deleting the other one. That is a good option. Let's see. So I would duplicate this, oh, just so I have another one. Right click, press duplicate, and press select again to, or wait, select, duplicate. Move it so we have the whole um, alphabet. It's not the whole alphabet, but it's like almost all of it. <laughs> and then I'm gonna press these nodes and I'm gonna press them to make their all showing. And let me see if I can just like select all these and backspace them. I don't think that really helped. Let's see. I don't know. I wonder why. And then let me press delete. Okay. So you have to press delete. I don't know why the backspace didn't work. I'm sure maybe it works in other cases, but um, what letter did I want? I wanted uh, I wanted U. So I'm going to just take the add and flip it. Oops. This is what I'm saying by like, it's a little bit more effort than it's worth. Like honestly, I think just cropping the image before you um, put it in here would be a lot smarter. Um, but we're in Inkscape, so we'll use it um, while we're here. Oops. I don't know why suddenly, like, I'm only selecting the A, but when I delete it, is it going to delete the whole thing? Yeah, that's so whack. Okay, let me try just deleting something in the middle. Delete. Mm. Again, I'm going to give myself two seconds to do this. If it doesn't work, we will let it go. It is okay. I mean, at least we figured out the um, the box for selecting them, so I don't actually have to select every node, because that would be horrible. Um, let's see. I want to see if I just press backspace will work. Okay, so I guess sometimes the backspace works, and sometimes you should use delete, so I just selected the ones I wanted to delete. That's a lot faster. Okay. Um, okay. Fast. Okay, so we have a U, um, an N, an S. We still need a T. There's no T. Okay. 
we need an O and we need two P's. I might have a P. Let me check if I um if I saved one. I might have. Checking my Google Drive. Oh, I didn't save a P. I want some new letters. This font is kind of, it's a little boring. Let me import another file. Oops. Oh yeah, I didn't even, I have some more images. <laughs> They kind of fit the vibe, right? Everything's black and white. Select them. Oops. This has more letters in it. Okay, so let me do this very fast. Trace bitmap. Uh, single scan. Update. Press OK. Let's see if it worked. It did. And I can delete this. Let me zoom in to make sure those are the vectors. They are. Let me do the same for this. Update. Um, okay. Okay, great. And let me zoom in. This one's a PNG. Backspace. I love how I went from flowers to like everything being black and white. I don't know why, but I did. Let me make this black so it matches everything. Oops, I made it green. And let's flip it. Sometimes I feel like it's kind of hard to like rotate things in here. You just have to like double um, click it. So that's a U. Um, I'm trying to get my alphabet together, guys. <laughs> now I can do a T. Oh, a crop tool would be so nice. Um, I might just go ahead and crop these in paint so that I don't have to erase all the nodes again. It's work smarter, not harder. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna open up paint and select these and then I'll import them in again. This might be uh, faster to so I can work on the rest of my design. Ideally, I would, um, I would pick like all different fonts but since I didn't, I'm just gonna like use the same font for a lot of these. What letters were I missing? A N no U N S T. Let me import my T in. Man, I need so many letters. <laughs> Maybe, okay, I'm just gonna continue with the letters that I have right now because unstoppable is such a long word. Okay, so I like this design too. This is gonna be cool. Might incorporate that in later. I'm only streaming till eight today, so I'm probably gonna work on a lot of um, my design like in my own free time and I'll probably come back with like, so it fits uh, this vibe a little bit more. Okay, so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use it for inspiration. Let me clean up my, um, what I have so far. I'm gonna put these all on the left hand side and have the letters I actually wanna use over here. Okay. Later, I'm gonna hopefully figure out, um, uh, what was I gonna say? L hopefully later I'm gonna figure out how to crop things faster because I'm sure there is a faster way to do it. I'm gonna figure it out and I'll like show you guys next time. So let me move this over here. The thing is, there's so many great like Inkscape tutorials online. Like if you just Google Inkscape and you can type in like, that's what I was doing today afternoon. You can type like Inkscape text, Inkscape design, like Inkscape tutorials. And there are so many people that have like great tutorials on YouTube or just like on the internet, you can find a lot of articles. And if you just like, this software is free. So like, if you just wanna download it and mess around, 
I was actually surprised because I used to think it was just for digital embroidery, but it's for like plenty of different things. Like some people just use it as a design software instead of Adobe. So like you can make like logos on it and just save them, all kinds of stuff. Okay, so I guess this is what we have so far. I'm just gonna use the word, let me just use the word sun. Yep, we're gonna rearrange it and pretend that's just what it's supposed to look like. Let me zoom in. I wanna make this smoother, and again, just how to do that is you gonna edit the nodes. I'm gonna delete this one. So I just right click and I'm gonna press, oops, <laughs> I actually deleted the whole image. Let me make sure I actually selected a, a node. Let me press this. And minus. Yeah, I would just recommend using um, the toolbar up here instead of the um, right click, because um, even if you press the node, if you press delete, it's going to assume that you want to delete the whole image, not just the node. So use the toolbar up here that um, adds and deletes the nodes. So that made it a bit smoother. Zoom out. I'm super picky, but that's because I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> okay, so what I want to do now is, um, because I want to do like a scrapbook look, I would actually make these all different colors. So say I make this green, I'll make this uh, maybe blue, and I'll go with red. Oops, not the right red. Like this. Okay, and just to like mock this up, let's see, I'll create like a square behind this. And let's just make it tan. Yellow. Okay. And if you want to move something to the back, just select it. And then up here, it should say um, lower selection to bottom. And I'm gonna just duplicate this, this square. And I'm going to send them all to the back. Oh yeah, you can also design stickers on here. <laughs> so just to mock up what this would look like on a sweater, I would make these different sizes. So maybe I would make the end a lot bigger because this might this is a kind of a weird shape, so I'd make I want to make it like more readable. So I guess I would make it bigger. Put it in here, make the square a bit bigger. Oops, we press select, it's on. And then let me group them. So shift and then select both of them, and right click and press group. So now I think I can rotate both of them at the same time. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, see now I can rotate them. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this. Um, shift both of them, shift, select both of them and then group. And then double click it. So if the first time you click it, it's just gonna be like um, to make it smaller or bigger to transform the object. Click on the object again and it'll let you rotate it. So I would rotate it, I'd rotate it this way. Um, I just want to mock up like how it would look. And if I was to do this, um, if I was to say I was printing it, um, what I would actually do is um, I would probably distress the, uh, the letters. Like, not the letters. So first what I would do is I'd put the canvas um, in the like under the embroider machine, embroider these letters onto the embroider machine, and then once it's embroidered, you can cut out your canvas. Um, and I would probably distress the edges with some tweezers. If you just like uh, just hold the cloth in between your tweezers and run them back and forth, it'll distress the edges. And I think it could look really cool like that. Oops. Okay, and then let me make them. So this would be like an example of what I'd do. So move this around. You can also use the arrow keys to move shapes on here. So that's a good option. And let me make it shorter. Yeah, I'd also skew things. So like maybe I'd make some of these like more parallelograms instead of squares. So like maybe not cutting them out as neatly as 
you could. That could be pretty cool. Let me see if I can uh, skew these images. Let's see. A good example, like I think a good tool to like randomize things would be the tweaking objects by sculpting or painting. So it'll give you just like a circle, and then like I could like, oops, I need a. Let me group my S. <laughs> Shift and group, and then so say I want to randomize it because, like, I do. I would do this, and I can just push these away from each other. Hmm, I wonder why this doesn't work. Press plus. This one doesn't seem to be moving. Okay. My mod said, can you show how to create your own paths out of nodes? Yes, I can. So let's see. Up here. Let me just uh, do this. So I would go to um, edit paths by nodes, and then I would just insert a new node. So I think that's how you do it. Wait, let me try again. No, don't be inserting it into a segment. Okay, so I'll press this one. I'll insert a node um, at min x, so that means I think I could just press it. Is that right? Hmm. Honestly, you know what I think would be easier? If I just edited nodes that I already had. So let me... Let me duplicate this and ungroup it. How would I just create a node from scratch? Let's see. If I want to draw something, I would use, I think maybe this, make. There's a way to draw, let me remember. I'm trying to, oh, it's this tool. So you would use um, the tool that says draw Bezier curves in straight lines. So it's this, and like that would create nodes. So say I want to like make a shape myself organically. Okay, so what you would do again, it's the blue pen tool on the left hand side. So it's called draw Bezier curves in straight lines. Um, so what I would do is I would just like sketch the image I wanted. So say I would just, let's do a star. I think that's what I did last time. Not the best star, but it's still a star. Okay. And then, um, to end the image, like click again, like double click. So let me try that again. So triangle, it'll keep drawing. Like every time you click, it's going to keep adding a different node. You have to double click to create an image. So, and you can um, right click to stop creating like new paths. And then that's how you have a node. I'm gonna erase these. If I wanted to change the shapes of these or add new ones to existing images, let me show you how I would do that. Um, here, which image do I wanna warp? Let's use this A, it's kinda interesting. But I feel like it could be better. It could be more interesting. So. I guess I'll zoom in so you don't have to see the rest of everything. Okay, so what I would do is I'd press the tool second from the top, the added paths by nodes. And what you can do is like if you wanted to warp the image or just like mess around, so you can like drag these nodes to change how the image looks. So say I want to curve this out more. I would mess around with these nodes. And it's gonna, when you move a node, it's gonna like change uh, the path in between the nodes that it's connected to, if that makes sense. So see like by moving this node, the one that I'm like messing around with, the it's only uh, changing the path from this node to this node, and this node to this node, like the ones on either end of it. That's not gonna like suddenly change the whole side of the shape. So if I wanted to change the whole side of the shape, what I would do is I would probably delete this node so let me press this node and go up here and press delete it and I would delete this one too. 
And let me just delete this one too. Oops. And let's see. Uh, I kind of did what I want, but like not really. So let's mess with the, um, like the angles over here. Okay. See, I like uh curved it more by changing the path of this. So I would obviously want it to be like a lot less dramatic than this. So let's see if we can fix it to how I want. I'm gonna move this in and move the curve out. So again, I wanna curve it, so we're missing with these. And I think um, changing the length would change like how dramatic of a um, curve it is, I think. So let's see. Try and do this. I'm gonna move it out so it curves a bit more. Okay, looking better. Okay. Okay, so we changed the shape a little bit. Is it as recognizable as an egg? Probably not, but it looks kind of cool. <laughs> so I'm just control Z it and have it back to normal though. To undo any changes, just press control Z. And it's back to an A. And let's see if we can sort it a little bit though. This is the thing, it's already like, it's such an abstract shape already that like, I feel like if I change anything, it won't really be recognizable as an A. <laughs> uh. Okay. What I'm wondering is that like, if I um, wanted to embroider something straight onto a t-shirt, my worry is that the embroidery machine would catch on the shirt. So I'm that's why I would be using um, like the canvas that's available in the makerspace and print my letters onto that but say like I had these designs um, that I would want straight on the sweater I'm kind of wondering what I would do with them I kind of like these I feel like these are pretty trendy um, in graphic design right now like um, a lot of these digital stars I've been using them in my own design some of these were rendered a lot neater than others like this one's pretty cool and this one's pretty cool I think we can make a shape like this um, in Inkscape itself. If you just use the polygon tool on the left side, it, it creates stars and polygons. So let's just press a shape and oops, remember to press select, otherwise it's gonna create a new shape. Um, and then if I select it, or if I, let me see, you have to press the polygon and star tool again. You can change the corners. So let's see if we can get to match one. Spoke ratio. So the spoke ratio will make it more um, like the sp the, s <laughs> the spokes um, more dramatic or less dramatic. So I just kind of I kind of want it to be dramatic, and then I want it to be less rounded. So I'm gonna um, decrease this. Let me just change it to one to point one. Okay, that made it pretty sharp. Um, I think I could even do it to point zero five. Yeah, that's that's sharper. Um, Kind of the same idea as these shapes. Oh yeah. Um, let's rotate it. So one point is at the top. Okay. So see right there, we made a, a much neater version of this vector. Uh, my worry is, I wonder if you could like, I don't think you could um, change like the different vectors to be different sizes like if you look at this image right here the um ones in the corners are smaller than the ones that make up the plus if that makes sense the cardinal directions <laughs> the cardinal directions um are longer than the other ones oh can i make a hole in the a let's try that that might make it more readable as an a control plus 
Yeah, but that's what I was just wondering for my design if I wanted to put everything on canvas and then make everything patchwork. Because the thing is, I would kind of want the stars like on the sweater itself, not on the canvas, but I'd have to look into that. Um, let's see if you can make a hole in this. And let's see. Can we add a node into the middle of nowhere? That's my question. Because I assumed that the nodes were outlining the shape. Let's see. Where would we even add it? Um, or what tool would we use? Let's see. This one's joining selected, this one's breaking paths. I would need to create a new segment. Um, I'm not sure how I would do that. Let's see. Or I wonder if I could like um, join shapes. So what I would do is, um, I think I'm gonna create a circle and I'm gonna move it, let's see. I still want the it to look kind of abstract, so I don't want it in the center. Let's see. That seems like good placement. Let's make it wider. Yeah, that could look cool, I guess. So let's make this white. And let's shift, bring them together, and then let's... I know we could just group them, but like, what if I wanted this white to be transparent? Or like, what if I wanted to make them the same image? So let's see. Um, there might be some more options. Pop selected objects out of the group. Let's see. Would that just move the one object? So they're not grouped anymore? Yeah, I guess if you want to, if you, instead of like ungrouping all of the, like say you had multiple images together or multiple shapes, instead of um, ungrouping all of them and then having to group them again afterwards, you could just use that tool, the pop selected objects out of the group. Um, let's see what else we could do. Oh my god, let me make, <laughs> let me use the text option in here, I didn't even realize. I was so excited to import my text in that I forgot there was a text option in Inkscape. So let's um, make these letters uh, unstoppable again. So I'm going to select these, um, the U, whoa, I'm trying to, I thought I grouped these, why is it separating? I guess I could do it myself. I guess I ungrouped them. Let me group them again. Group. Okay. I want the U, the N, the S, and then I'm gonna get rid of the the um, <laughs> the circle in it because I don't really like it. <laughs> the A. Okay. So I'm gonna type in the rest of the letters with the text option. So let me just show you how to do that. You can go to text here, and oh, there's an F SFG font editor, Unicode characters. Hmm, you can even convert things to text. What does that mean? Let me try. I wonder if that did anything. I'm just gonna control Z just in case. Sometimes you just gotta click on the options, even if you don't know what they're doing. So text and font. I think that's gonna pull up a different thing. Okay. Okay. What are features? Oh, you can, like, choose if you want subscript or superscript, capital letters. Like, you can make everything, like, uppercase if you wanted. Let me choose a font family. I personally like Arial over Times New Roman. I know that's an unpopular opinion, but I think Arial bold, like, Arial as the title font, if you bold it, I think it looks better. I use Arial all the time now, like I use it for all of my papers. Cause now that we're in college, they don't always have the rule that you need to have stuff in Times New Roman. But not Arial size 12, Arial size 11. Cause size 12 is too big. Okay, oh yeah, I forgot if you press these, it'll just, okay, I can use the arrow key to click these faster. I want a cool font. I don't really, ooh, this one's cool. Okay, let's use this. How do I use it though? That's the question. Uh, let me create a text box, um, and let's type something, um, I need a T, that's what I need. Oh, what was the name of that font? I forgot. I guess we're gonna have to look for it, guys. I'm just using, you can just hold down the arrow key. <laughs> um, I mean, how cool could a T look is a thing, like, they're just a T, it's two lines. Oh wait, that one's kinda cool. 
It got thicker at the bottom. Are you guys sans serif or serif people? I'm particular. I like sans serif. If you don't know, the serif is the line on the ends of the letter. I don't really like sans like serif. I feel like it's very old timey. Um, I mean, if you've been noticing, like, uh, um, in like brands are rebranding to use sans serif fonts because it's supposed to look more modern. You can Google it. You can see like um, old logos versus new logos. I think a lot of um, the luxury fashion businesses, you can use them as good examples. Let's use this tee. Franklin Gothic Heavy. Oh, there's even different options here. So you can make it italic if you want it. I'll make it italic. And I'll make this um, font size 100 because right now it's very small. Oh, wait. Did it get smaller? Let's see. Can it only go up to 144? No, it's so small. My mod said I like Ariel, but I don't know how I feel about size 11. Ariel on size 12 is like way too large. Like if you're trying to write a paper, I already like zoom out when I write papers. Like I don't like the Google Docs being full screen. Something about it, like the words are just too big. I lost my font guy. Or like it didn't work. Let me press select. I want to make it larger. Why is it so puny? Okay, I just dragged it larger. And I guess you have to type it first and then choose the font. I chose the font first and then typed it, and it didn't really work out that well. So, um, the font that I had was Franklin Gothic Heavy. Wait, there's different options. Let me press. Let me see. I think it was heavy. This one. I like this one. And I'm gonna make it italic. <laughs> My font size is a thousand. That's so sad. <laughs> okay. Um, double or single space? I, uh, when I type papers, I like working in, um, 1.15. And then, and then I, like, change it to, like, what they want, like, what they ask me to do after that. But I, like, when I first type the paper, I do it Arial, size 11, 1.15. Write as much as you can, um, if they want you to double space it, and then you get to see the magic of it being more pages than you thought. It's great. Such a good experience. <laughs> Just gonna duplicate my, um my square here, ungroup, delete this S. Uh, double space is like so much space. Like I don't understand why they want us to use that. Like the thing is 1.15 or even 1.5 like gets that job done. I feel like you don't personally need two like spacing of two. Like I think it should be 1.5. I mean but we have to write less so like should I really complain? Not really. <laughs> Oh, okay. So if you want to skew it to like more of a parallelogram, you just use the one in the middle. So let me see. I kind of want it to be, ooh, that was cool. Okay. And I'm just going to use this and then I'm going to send it to the back up here. So we got the T. Okay. What color, what color do you want the T to be? Dang, why is this box so big? Let me see if I can make it smaller. Select. Oh, okay. If I select it, it's smaller. If you just if you press text, it gives you the big box. And I still need to let me just keep duplicating these. I need an O. I think honestly, like the plain fonts look really good, and they'll probably be a lot easier to embroider. I feel like there'll be like less error with those, cause even like this over here like all these fonts are like pretty plain it's just that they change it up and they also like change the color so you know same difference uh let me keep duplicating this i need two p's um i got u n s t o p p a and then i need b l e so i need two more i mean three more <laughs> Oops, it's going off the screen. Let me move all of these. So I can just press select. I can make a big square. And I can move them all left. This was a group. Let me group it. <laughs> Before I keep going. Do you guys think when I make this, I should overlap the, um... Like, should I overlap? Like, what if I did like this? Oops. No, I need to select. 
liked it. What if I overlap the squares? I don't know how I feel about that. Um, I think I'm gonna surge the, um, edges. That's how I've seen- I've seen other people make sweaters like this, and they usually, like, surge the edges so it looks like it's sewn on, because I feel like a single stitch would probably not, like, hold a thicker fabric to a hoodie. Okay. Let's choose different fonts. Um... I need the font- I need the font menu again. What was it? Oh, yellow. Okay, she said she wants the TV yellow. I'm gonna choose that... the... egg yellow color. <laughs> okay! Or maybe it needs to be darker. Okay. Nice! Kinda like gold. Um, okay, and you can change the font up here. I'm just gonna pick random ones for now. I'm um, probably gonna, like, Google, um fonts that I think are more interesting later. Oops, I don't like that. Control Z. Let me change them into P's. I'll make one lowercase and one uppercase. Oh, they look the same. Huh. There might not be any uppercase in that font. There's so much going on on this page. I want the E to be lowercase. And let's just pick random fonts on the left hand side. Yeah, if I didn't say that earlier, the fonts are up here. Mm. Let me pick a serif font. This one's kind of cool. Let me change one of these P's. Okay, old tiny font. Then I should probably change this one to something thicker. I'm very particular about these kinds of things. I love like f um, fonts. Like typography is so cool. Like if you go on Pinterest and just like search typography, you can find like all kinds of things. That's how I found like all these letters. Um, sometimes people will make like the whole alphabet, but oftentimes people will just like uh, design one or two letters here and there. It's still pretty cool. Um, let me make this normal instead of italic. And let me leave the L that way and the E. I can change that into. Oop, what is this one? I think I saw one where the A was a triangle. Oh, right here. Oh, that's kind of ugly, not gonna lie. <laughs> okay, so we have all of these. It kind of looks like Monsters Inc. Uh, let me make sure I group them. Imagine this on like a black hoodie. That's what I'm going for. I feel like it'd be really cool, right? Oh, honestly, like, uh, I wonder if instead of doing this on canvas, I could like, uh, bring different colored shirts, like, um, to put these on. I wonder if we can embroider straight onto this shirt. Like, it's like a bad idea, cause like, what if you mess up? So, but like, I'd be using old t-shirts. So I think it could be okay. Remember, double click to rotate. Okay, and let me select. I'm gonna select these. Okay, this doesn't look too bad. Kind of the same vibe. I mean, these are like, these are all just like regular, regular fonts. <laughs> and where would I put the flowers, guys? Like, I made them. <laughs> what if I just like, just stuck it on the end? Or honestly, that could be the O. Let me do that. I don't want to use this. Oh, let's use a flower. Okay. I hope that gets the point across. And let me just move these. We can select a bunch of um, designs just by pressing shift and now I can move them with the arrow keys. Slow going, but it's useful. Yeah. My mod said as long as the material isn't too stretchy, you'll be able to embroider on the shirt directly. Yeah, so maybe I'll just bring like some old shirts. I have a lot of volunteering shirts that are different colors, so that could be cool. 
Because it could be like this, where like the um, the background color is uh, different than the font color. That could be kind of cool. So let's pick different colors for these. Oh, let's see if we can um, select it from the image. I think we can. Let's let me show you how to do that. So to find the colors, what was the shortcut? I have it written down. It should be Control Shift F, I think. Control Shift F. And let's see if we can just select it straight from the image because then maybe I can just use the same. Is there a color picker tool? Oh, there is. Okay. Right here, if you guys see, it's kind of small. Pick colors from an image. So, I like this pink. Oh, why is it so much darker? Let me try again. My opacity is on 100. Or let me do this, uh... Let me do this pink. Okay, it worked. Okay, let me go ahead and change some of these. Why not? Just to see if we can keep doing it. Oh, where'd it go? Control Shift F. Oops. I think I erased mine. Let me press it again. Is it because they're grouped? Let me see. Let me ungroup them. Yeah, you have to ungroup them. And then... I'll just light blue. Okay, this is coming out nice. Let me just go ahead and ungroup all my letters while I'm at it. Group them, um, okay. Oh, that orange is nice. Let me get this. So I'm, let me zoom in. <laughs> I'm doing this from f so far away, I like can't get the colors right. Okay, let me make this smaller. move this away. Okay. And let's just pick the nice color combinations. I know, I like this orange. It's super cool. I like this green they have going on. Let me put this, uh, or let me pick, uh, I'll make the, the square green. Just to mock this up. I wonder how much thread it would take to actually like, you know, make, oh, that color's too light. I think it looked nice because there was a black outline. But I think we can do that, right? I think we can, um, we were doing that earlier. So let's figure out how to do that. Um, what we did was we set the stroke, stroke paint. I want a solid outline. How do I make the solid outline thicker? Let's see. Stroke style. Okay, so we can make the width bigger. Okay, so let me. Okay, that looks super cool. Okay, kind of cool. I think I would do that on like an easier font though. I think I would do it on this. Let me press that. And let me make it like 10. Or even like 8. And I'm gonna get rid of the stroke on this and just pick a darker color. What about blue? That blue's kind of light. You're witnessing my uh, design process, guys. <laughs> I wonder what, what color was it before? It was green. Oh, let me change it back. Is this green? Okay. And then, oops, control Z. Select. I'm gonna make the background um, this color. I think I wanna put an outline on this. So, stroke paint and stroke style. And let's set the width to 10. Oops, no, I kinda. 5? I feel like the outline makes it look a little bit more childish. I mean, it is kind of childish already. Am I gonna am I gonna add borders around the box letters? Hmm. Should I? <laughs> should I? Should I add borders to all the letters? There are borders around all the letters in this inspo photo. Let's do it. I mean, why not? I can even pick a uh, different widths if I want. 
Let me just do it by random. Five. Do this one with six. I think of this one I'm gonna do like a really thin stroke because otherwise it's not it's not easily readable. I think honestly this this uh, letter needs to be a lot bigger. I think I need to pick a different color as well. So let's pick, um, let's just reverse it. Let's do a light green on a dark green. That's, I think that's easier to read. And I would make the stroke a little bit smaller. Yeah. If you have like letters with like wacky designs, I think they just need to be bigger to read. I'll move this up here. I don't know how I feel about this outline. I don't really like it. Let me see if I can make it smaller. Or we can make it dashes. No, I don't know about that. Yeah, no. <laughs> I think for that one I would just, uh, let's see. Maybe just one. I don't know. I personally wouldn't, but since the rest of them are like outlined, I feel like I have to. So let's just keep going. Um, you have to press stroke paint first, and I'm gonna make these a lot smaller. I wonder why the default is like 14. Oh, I didn't choose font color. Let me zoom out. I'm running out of colors <laughs> on this photo. I guess I'll just pick them at random. Uh, I always I always make sure to do the primary color. I did orange, but I didn't do red yet. Let me get red. Um, oops. Let me make this one. We didn't get pink. Maybe a lighter pink. Oh, it's purple. Ooh, I should break it up with green again. What is your guys' favorite color? That's the, that's like a good question, honestly. And purple. And I'm gonna set outlines. I think doing everything at once is a lot easier than like going back and forth. Can I make that? So I did it at random. Maybe five. And let's make it a lighter color. Okay. Can I make one of the letters checkered? Yes, I can. Let's pick um, one of the regular fonts. Let's make this L checkered. Um, so I would go to fill and then here I could press um, pattern. And I can make it striped or I could make it checkerboard. Let's see, I kind of like checkerboard. Maybe I'll make one of the letters polka dotted. I feel like that could, um... Oh, wait, I need a color. Oops. I need to put a... I think I need to put another one behind it. <laughs> Let me duplicate this. And make that one normal fill behind it. What color was it? I have no idea. Maybe orange. Let me drag them apart. Okay, so I'm going to send this one to the back. I'm going to put it below it. And I'm going to set the one on top to checkerboard and see if that works. Huh. I wonder why that's not working. It worked before. Maybe because I have to... Do I have to turn off the stroke paint? Fill. Checkerboard. Normal. Huh. All the other ones are working. Use the node tool to adjust position scale and rotation. Hmm. Checkerboard white? Oh no, I wonder why it's not working. That's so sad, guys. I guess I'll figure it out eventually. I think I'll make one of the letters checkerboard and another one polka dotted. And I guess we can just continue mocking this up. Back. 
they're kind of all skewed because I duplicated one that was skewed. Okay, so this is gonna be my. I'm gonna start wrapping up because um, we only have two minutes left. But this is like a, a basic idea of what my design is gonna be. I'll probably work on this um, by my. Oh, that would look so cool. Okay, <laughs> um, I'm probably gonna work on this design myself, and the next um, live stream I do, I'll probably have like a more concrete idea of um, the actual design and like what other objects I want to put in it. So this is, let me just review what we actually worked on today. So let me zoom out. So what I showed you guys how to do was, um, I showed you guys how to like turn PNGs into vectors and the reason you want them as vectors is because they're higher quality and they can be as, um, you can make them as big or small as you want without um, having to worry about the quality decreasing. Um, I showed you guys how to turn like images into vectors as well and like any image that you upload I also show you how to um, even upload the images in the first place um, What else do we do? We just messed around with the colors learn how to edit the nodes um, Yeah, just mess around with a bunch of the settings I gave you the initial idea of like what my design is gonna look like on this series so like moving forward um, I think for the next session, I'm actually gonna work on the proper sizing because as you can see right now I just have everything like on the program but this is the actual canvas like this little square right there so I have to I would change the size you can change the size of the canvas so I would change the size of the size of the canvas and have to figure out the sizing of all of the letters and um, actually how to embroider them I need to look into the rules of um, what you can upload and what you can't like how to save the file all of that so That'll probably be the next time. If you guys have any questions, then like feel free to reach out. Um, yeah, I think that's all for today, guys. I hope you guys learned how to find the fonts, how to turn PNGs into vectors, all that kind of fun stuff. Remember, Inkscape is a free software. The link was in the stream chat, um, and you can just Google it online and find it. Um, yeah. If you have any questions feel free to contact the library ask us virtual consultants and they can help you um, use the program as well but that's pretty much all for today i'll be con continuing the series um every tuesday from six to eight so if you guys want to follow along in how i embroider on that sweater feel free to join again but that's all for today thank you guys for joining and thanks to my lovely mod for moderating <laughs> i'll see you guys next time i guess <laughs>